Hi there, Matt Wade here. And today we're gonna to talk about how to take attendance, well, find out who attended at least, in a meeting in Microsoft Teams. So let's jump right in. If you run meetings in Microsoft Teams, you're able to track who has attended those meetings, what time they joined, what time they left, what time they rejoined, etc. This works for internal and external attendees. Only the meeting organizer can download the attendance report, and these reports are only available if your admin has enabled the feature. There are two ways to get the report, during the meeting and after. Being able to get the report after the meeting is new as of October 2020 and should roll out to every organization by the end of the month. However, and that's a big however, your Office 365 admin has to enable the new feature by running a PowerShell command. If you're not in charge of this or you don't know what that means and you want that new feature, reach out to your admin and ask them to enable it. Unfortunately, the Microsoft 365 roadmap still says September, by the way. Administrators recently received news that it's delayed to the end of October. There are a couple big benefits to the change. First, you're no longer running into the issue of being out of luck on the attendance if you forgot to download it during the meeting. You can get it after anytime you want. Second, the new report contains new information. And as far as I know, there's no way for someone to fudge this information. For them to show up on the attendance list, they have to have clicked that join button and be present, at least at that moment. What they do during the meeting, of course, is a different story, but you'll know if people are late to a meeting or class or skipping out early. Since I think uh, most people will likely want to get the attendance report after the meeting, let's cover that first. And there's not much to cover, it's simple. Once the meeting concludes, meaning everyone has left, the attendance report will automatically show up in the meeting chat, visible only to the meeting organizer. That means nobody else sees this particular box other than the organizer. If you've recorded the meeting or enabled live captions, the attendance report will be grouped with the recording and transcript. Based on some testing, this definitely isn't immediate. It shows up anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour after the meeting ends, so plan accordingly. And from here, you can download the file. It will download to your computer's designated downloads file. You can also find the file in the Files app in Teams via the Downloads folder. Quick tip here. The report doesn't start compiling until the meeting is over. To get it as soon as possible, don't just leave the meeting, end the meeting for everyone so everyone leaves at the same time. Sometimes people forget to hang up and that can delay when your report actually gets created. And in the case where you want to grab the attendance report during the meeting, you'll want to open the participants pane, click the ellipsis to the right of participants, then click download attendance list. Again, the file will be downloaded to your computer's default downloads folder. Be wary of downloading the attendance report during the meeting now that you can get it after the meeting automatically. An attendance report grabbed during the meeting is only a snapshot in time. Things can change after you download it. I would just wait for the file to show up in the meeting chat afterwards unless you need the report immediately. And a small aside, in both cases, after and during the meeting, where to get the meeting attendance is not obvious because for whatever reason, Microsoft chose to use an icon that generally just means download, which yes, you're downloading a file, but the icon should probably represent the context of a checklist or a group of people. So don't be surprised if you missed either of these options in the past because the icon did not scream attendance list to you. Oh well. Now, what does Teams actually give you? The downloaded file is a CSV file or comma separated value file, which is an old school simple and cross-platform spreadsheet file. It's actually unfortunate in my opinion that the attendance report isn't offered as an Excel file as an option. The precedent is there for transcripts, which come in the standard transcript file type, but also Word doc. That really should be a thing because most people outside of geekdom don't know what CSV files are nor what they should do with them. But the easiest way to work with this file is to open Excel and then open the file wherever you saved it. Once the new attendance report type is enabled, the updated version I mentioned earlier, you get more information in that report. That includes the meeting name, the start time, number of attendees, participant names, join time, leave time, email if there is one, and role in the meeting. If you see somebody listed multiple times, it means they joined, left, and rejoined. Unlike the older version of the attendance report, if somebody joins the meeting early, it will record what time they actually joined, not what time the organizer joined. Now let's play around with this information a little bit. This actually moves more into an Excel introduction than it is a Teams introduction, 
But it's actually a really uh, useful kind of skill set to have uh, in addition to anything within Microsoft Teams. So if we look at the Excel spreadsheet here, the first thing that I would do in this case is try to just identify quickly what the column headers are by boldening them and centering them in the uh, cells. You'll see here that a couple people show up uh, twice. That means they have left and rejoined the meeting. Both Megan and Alex left around the same time. Let's say they had to leave for another meeting quickly, came back and rejoined later on. You can see you have the join time in the second column, the leave time in the third column, Column, the duration of how much time they were in, so basically just a little bit of math in the, the uh, fourth column. The fifth column provides an email address. The email address is empty if the person that joined is a guest. So you can see here Jane Smith and Bill Johnson were both guests. These are people who had the link to the meeting and joined without having uh, being signed in or anything like that. So they just provided a name when they, when they uh, joined the meeting. It asked you for a name, they provided it, and they went forward with that. And then the uh, role of the uh, person, the participant. In this case, I was the organizer. Everybody was an attendee. Nobody in this case was a presenter. So good to know. The new meeting uh, attendance report has a summary at the top, the number of users, six, the meeting title, and then the start time. Um, and moving forward here, the next step that I would do after sort of making things a little bit nicer is I want to be able to sort, filter, and identify who's in this meeting. Now this meeting didn't have very many people in it, but once you get into very large meetings, town halls, classes, you really actually want to identify who was in it, who wasn't, maybe who missed. Um, the first thing I would do is jump into the data tab after clicking the row header here and click the button called filter. This gives me the opportunity to sort and filter the information that I have. So maybe I wanted to filter this out to not show anybody but attendees. So I can uh, clear this out and then just select attendees. You can see that I am now removed. If there are any presenters, they would be gone as well. I could also show just the presenters if there happened to have been a number of them. There will always only be one organizer, so that would be not really all that useful. I can also uh, filter out and find out, hey, maybe somebody jumped around two, three, four times and I just wanted to see you know, who those, those people were. Uh, so maybe I just want to uh, clear this out and just look at, say, Megan. So I can just see what Megan did and do that kind of thing. I can also look at uh, who came in as guests and be just a little bit more fancy with this. You can see in the filter option up here, there's a drop down here where I can say contains or does not contain. Maybe I just wanna filter for the word guest and I can say it contains the word guest. And if I press enter, you'll see that this is now filtered to just show Jane Smith and Bill Johnson because they have the word guest in there. I can clear the filter out just by clicking clear. Uh, and I can also sort the join and leave times if I wanted to. I can do a whole bunch of stuff with uh, respect to that. I will say here one downside is that the names come through however they show up within your organization. So if your organization shows Matt Wade, uh, that's how it's gonna show up. So if you try to alphabet, uh, alphabetize this list, it's gonna be alphabetized with my first name. If you happen to be an organization that goes by Wade comma M or Matt, it's gonna alphabetize by last name. Either way, it's not a great setup because you can't separate out the first and last names, unfortunately, but so be it. But sure, we can, of course, put these in alphabetical order for that. So you can at least go through and find out who you're looking for based on uh, that first name. You can also get an idea of who joined, especially if they have an Office 365 account. You'll actually notice if I stretch this out, a few people in here, mm, this demo I didn't actually uh, take as an example, but uh, anybody that's invited in that has an Office 365 account, their email address will be recorded in here. They are not considered uh, full on guests because they're already in Microsoft's network. So you actually do retain that information, which is actually very useful. And to clear out any of your sorting, filtering, things like that. Uh, the filters themselves, you can just click the clear filter if there is one in place. For sorting, uh, you can go up into the ribbon and click the clear button and it will uh, remove the filter or the, the sort that you have in place. It will leave it as it, as it was, but it won't be considered sorted. Uh, what's kind of cool is you can actually sort multiple things at the same time. So you can have both the name and the join time safe uh, sorted uh, and uh, have those in ascending order for uh, whatever you may, na may uh, need in that case. And... Uh, have multiple setups going at the same time. So pretty cool, uh, useful little things that you can do with an Excel. Again, not much of a Teams uh, intro here. This is more some Excel stuff, but hey, I still think that data and filter uh, within Excel is one of the most useful uh, tools for really anybody. Uh, once they get experience in how to do it and what it can be useful for, it's uh, applicable to almost any type of spreadsheet you ever might want to use. So that's how you can manage taking attendance automatically in your online meeting or class. The big takeaway here is there's a new, better way to do it, 
and you need to pester your Office 365 admin to enable it. And if you like this kind of thing and you wanna learn that much more about Microsoft Teams and Office 365, I've got a new book coming out. You can pre-order Teach Yourself Visually Microsoft Teams today. Just visit the link below to be one of the first to get your copy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please leave any questions or comments below. I'm curious to hear how you're working with attendance reports, especially on how you slice and dice the data in Excel. That's really where the value is. As always, a like and subscribe is much appreciated. Happy tracking attendance, and I hope it entices your colleagues and students to be more punctual and present.